What's up Madden 17 fans? My name is Cody and I would like to welcome you to our video today. Today is really simple. It's, it's really something that I think is very helpful but will also be simple to apply. And so I'm really excited to share this with you guys. Today we're talking about what makes a power play. This is a question that I got in one of my videos and I think it's very important. This is, in my opinion, the single most important tip I could give you when it comes to scheme development. So if I were you, I would watch the entire video and if this video helps you, I would share this with a friend either by sending them it in a quick text, sharing it on Facebook, however you want to get it to them, get this video to your friends because this is something very important. I don't remember what playbook I am to be quite honest. I think I'm in Pittsburgh, okay? I think I'm in Pittsburgh and I want to show you how I would pick a power play in the sense of like route combinations okay so what routes to look for what you want to do is you want to figure out the effective Madden 17 routes so what do people do in Madden 17 this is a what what is what is the community doing that I can learn from so more than likely most people are going to run cover two defenses they're either going to blitz from those cover two defenses or they're going to run cross man, right? That's pretty much what people are going to do this season. So we've got to figure out on offense. Okay, so I know that's what I need to be practicing against. So we're going to practice against a nickel normal cover two sink. Now on offense, I actually think it's a little bit different than what most people think. What most people think is they say, okay, I need to find an offense that beats cover two. I personally don't think that's the best philosophy. What I think you need to do is figure out a concept that you want to establish, something that you think works very well. That may be a levels, that may be smash, that may be four verticals, whatever it may be. And, and hopefully those terms are somewhat familiar. They're, they're play concepts, okay? What what I would suggest is is putting it all together from the beginning, and that's by finding routes that you want to use. One person I remember shared this with me, and I'll share it with you. They said this: when you when you see a weird route, then try it out in practice mode. Okay, that philosophy has served me very well because what happens? I'll be just going through my playbook, and you know, I mean, like, all right, so I'm looking here, gun trio. And I see this Steeler dig, and I'm like, man, that's a really weird route that the interior receiver runs. So I'll pick it, and I'll test it out and see you know, what it can do. To me, that, that's a very good philosophy, and I think that that's something that would really help you. However, one other thing that I would say is very effectful, impactful for me is figuring out where you want to go. Let me share my power and counterplay. My power play is PA post. Obviously, this play attacks the middle of the field. As evidence, it, it, and you read it, so I would run it flipped like this, so you'll read it from le left to right, and what it's really gonna do is it's gonna attack the middle of the field, and it's gonna attack the far right of the field. The, the far left of the field is not gonna matter. It's not gonna attack, because I'm gonna put that tight end on a streak, okay? However, this route right here, this play Z spot, is now a little different. This play does not attack the right side of the field. It attacks the far left side and the middle, especially once you see how I set it up. So to me, it's kind of, I, I remember watching this video on comedy and they said comedy is really two things. It's setting someone up and then it's a punchline. And so the way it kind of works is you'll, you'll take the audience to the right and then before they're ready, you'll turn a dime and, you, and you'll go back left. And that's how you get people to laugh. I think it's kind of similar with your playbook. So all of that to say is, I don't really care what you run. So I'm going to show you a couple things. So if I was going to build a scheme, single back ace is surprisingly a pretty good, a pretty good little formation here. One thing that we know works is C routes work really well. We, we know that, okay? So if you wanted to build something around C routes, the corner strike could be a really good potential play because you have two C routes, you can go right and left, and in theory you could build 
two or three plays out of that. So we'll 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 just use corner strike will be our power play for this for this evidence. Because of a couple things. The first is that we have power routes that do something really effective, and that's these C routes. They do something really cool. Okay, they beat man to man. That's I mean C routes have always been a really good route in Madden because they have three distinct breaks. Now, what we want to do then to complement it is we want to we want to set the rest of the play up to help the one route. So how do we get this to flow well where it, it, it all works is like a fine-tuned machine. What I would do is I would put um, the tight end here, Martellus, and I would put him on an out route. Why? Because out routes are very effective at beating zone coverage and man coverage. They're very, I, in my opinion, they are one of the better routes in the game. So that's what I would do with Martellus Bennett, or uh, yeah, with Martellus Bennett here. What about Gronk? What would I do with him? Would I leave him? Would I run C routes to both sides? I would not run that. I would not do that. Because what happens is it's hard to read. It becomes hard to read if you're trying to look left and then look all the way to the right and then come all the way back to the left and then come all the way back to the right. You, Your mind, it, it's very difficult. I would much rather have a glance to the middle and then I quickly glance back to the left. It's, it's a little easier for me to read the defense that way. So that's what I do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put Gronkowski on a streak. If you guys watched one of the videos I did earlier, you, you know that the streak Actually, I would probably put him on a fade. You would know that the fade does a lot of cool, unique things against zone defenses because it forces the linebackers to defend it. If the linebackers don't stay with the tight end, then I know I'm going there. Then I would take Chris Hogan, um, the circle receiver, and I would put him either on a, a drag or an in route. Whatever floats your boat here. I don't really care one way or the other. That's that's pretty much what I would do. Now, there's a part of me that really would probably motion into trips, but we're not going to do that today. What we're going to do today is we're going to take LeGarrette Blunt and we're going to put him on a check and release pattern. That's the best route for him in this situation with what we're running. With everything else that we're doing, this is the best method. Now, the cool part is you can use motion snaps, you can use other things that make this more effective. With single back ace, if I was going to use a motion snap, I would bring, I would just motion Hogan in, snap about here, and then I would read my play. My first read would be the tight end to see if the linebackers go up the seam with the tight end. My second read would then be, if they don't go up with the tight end, then I would look to the left, so I'd look middle, then I'd look left real quick and see if I could hit one of those one of those quick in routes. If that doesn't work, so say there's there's coverage there, then I would come back to Chris Hogan. So if Gronk, nope, nope, and now I'm coming back to Chris Hogan, and we're going. Okay. If that doesn't work, if 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 that doesn't work out, so say he's covered, then what I would do is I would look to my C route because they're probably in something like a cover three or a cover th or a cover two man. They're probably in something like that. If, if they're in, if Martellus Bennett's covered, okay, that means that they're probably in a cover three defense or a cover two defense and they're running what's called uh, a hard flat. Okay, so something like this. So not there, not there. So then that means if I come back to Edelman, you know he's going to be open because he's in a curl flat type of area of the field. Okay, so hopefully you see how that kind of works. Tomorrow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you how to run a counter play off of this. So again, get them all going one way, and then on our counter plays, we're going to take them a different direction. Every receiver is going to run a very different type of passing pattern. So Hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, I know that by you sharing the video, okay? You telling me, thanks man, and all that, that's a great thing and I appreciate it. But the way I really know that this video has been helpful is if you share the video with somebody else. So I wanna encourage you just to share 
this video with somebody else that you think might be able to use it and it might be able to help them get better at Madden 17. Thank you so much for your time, guys.